Yes, yes, yes. Hey, yes. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Good evening. Ah, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another one of our shows here at the Caribbean Edge. Today, we're going to be hitting on human trafficking. And uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Keith Heron. Sean Whittingham. Don Wilson. Sean Spaulding. And, <laughs> and hopefully, we'll have a lot of people chiming in today. Uh, this is very important to us as um, we found out that uh, human trafficking right now is one of the fastest growing illegal businesses out there in the world today. So we figure it's, it's, our, uh, it's our job to talk about it as we normally do here on the Caribbean edge and try to you know, invoke some sort of conversation and see if we can get the awareness going. I find it very personal to myself. I'd like to know what's going on with my neighbors. I'd like to know what's going on with my co-workers. I'd like to go know what's going on in the area that I live. And if I think we all work together, we can probably help out here. Now, um, just to begin and just to open up the floor, guys, when, uh, when you think of human trafficking, what comes to mind? Any one of you can start? I personally think ahead, of um, child abuse, I think of uh, sex with minors, which is the deepest impact that I, I can see, and just modern day slavery, that's what it means to me. All right. I think I, I, I picture sex, um, sex trafficking, uh, prostitution, uh, forced, uh, forced prostitution, and um, under coercion. Yeah. It's really the trade of a human being under coercion, like Sean says, in exchange for sex, yeah. in exchange for labor, um, um, in both a private and commercial setting. But it's, it's using somebody's body um, against their will for others to profit. All right. All I right. think they're Great. trapped to some extent. Um, they can't move, they can't go anywhere, they're conditioned, yeah. um, they're controlled, um, and they're not themselves. I just think of it as years of abuse that will take an extended period of time to recover, and some people never recover from that abuse. Right. And, and that, that, um, that enslavement doesn't have to be um, manacles or handcuffs on the wrist. It could be fraud. It could be, in a lot of cases, which we're probably going to is withholding passports, withholding visas, oh, yeah. withholding your mode of being able to leave a situation or um, threats to your family, where mm -hmm. you're from. Right. Oh, to yeah. your life, to your yeah. family's life, physical beatings. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, this is disturbing. Just for us to talk about it, and I'm sure everyone on our panel today, um, when we were doing our research, I know I was deeply, <laughs> I was moved by this, and it, it actually would spoil the majority of the day. And I am, you know, I'm not, I'm that far away from it. I can just imagine what um, the victims have to go through, and uh, how secretive this is. And you know, coming up to the secretive part, let me ask you this: In what area, or when, um, where, where do you think this? this type of trade would primarily happen? Where would it take place? What well, should I answer that before or after doing the research? Because, <laughs> oh, you know, I, let me, <laughs> let, you know in, in, a, in an effort to that's, be, a, that's a good, that's a good, all right, let's just. Yeah, I'm gonna answer from before. before right, 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 so I'm um, relatable to, I'm assuming a lot of the people that are watching. Uh, what I envisioned was a uh, second, third world problem. Uh, for the most part, and that included uh, bringing people f uh, from you know impoverished areas and, and uh, having them work in the sex trade, as I as I um, uh, alluded to earlier. That was what I envisioned. Uh, what I know have discovered is um, is a lot broader than that. You know, it's it's in my backyard, and I'm not I'm not. That's no stretch. And Actually, in my backyard, okay. Yeah, and it's that my, like we all live in our own bubble. We live based on our own experiences and our friendships and family. So for me, it was I would think of countries where women, um, you know, live more sheltered, you know, more controlled lives, like India, which it is actively in. 
I've seen stuff um, in my own country, Jamaica, so I, I am aware that it happens in Jamaica and other Caribbean islands, but I know it happens elsewhere, just worldwide. Um, so that would have been my thought even before the research. For me, what happened um, to me personally, it hits home really close for me, um, especially after delving into the research for the past few days. Because while not personally, not knowing anybody involved or who's been affected, at least I don't think so, what kept happening to me, ringing over and over in my mind, is that especially the, the sex um, abuse portion of the human trafficking, because there's so many different areas and categories, things that we didn't think of or don't think of regularly, but it just kept hitting home because it impacts um, children, my children age, you know, so I couldn't help but, I mean, it, it made me extremely emotional. I hope I actually don't get emotional tonight because, I mean, as, yo as young as you could possibly imagine, and it's, it's a very sad, no, I mean, I just, yeah, I know, I know. awful, awful. I know, um, it's funny, when you, if we just pull back a little bit and just think of the basic part of human trafficking. So, there's a, what would be a, a perceived economical reason for every single human trafficking. The need for flesh, the need for organs, the need for cheap labor. Just something that derives money at a cheap labor. And if we can't get a person who's homeless, and we can't get them forced into labor, if we can't get somebody who's an immigrant, and get them forced into labor, if we can get someone who is maybe discarded or looking for a way out or something that can be forced into labor or be abused sexually or so, or so on, um, then the chances of that happening are there. Now the funny part is, when I started to dive into it, and I don't know if you guys saw this, it's in, you figure, like you made a, a note of, you thought it was only located in the probably the third world impoverished impoverished area areas. you know first world you just don't picture you know I, I, and I again I am assuming that most people they don't picture that that happens here right but just to add to what you said we cannot plead ignorance anymore and actually you're going to allude to that we can't plead ignorance exactly because everyone you have a slave working for you just so you know everyone who's watching us here we all have slaves working for us. We are benefiting from slave work, slave labor. So it, you know, it, it's it's all encompassing. Okay. Sorry, I just want to um, say welcome to the audience. Quite a few of you have joined in. Um, we asked a question earlier: human trafficking, what it looks like to you, what it feels like, what you think it is, what you know it to be. So feel free. We're looking for your comments, your feedback to definitely incorporate you in tonight's um, episode. So thank you so far for, for signing in, but feel free to share your comments and feedback. Sorry. No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> you know what? It's funny that you said that, Sean, because as Sean was mentioning that, I'm, I'm, I would like maybe... Could you elaborate a little bit on why you said that we have slaves or how, well, how, yeah. how many steps from us it is? Well, all right. So uh, we spoke earlier about what we assume um, human trafficking to be mostly what it entails, which is the sex trade. But you have human trafficking that's involved in uh, uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm. You have human trafficking that's involved in the restaurant and catering business. The textile garment industry. Oh. You know, it's, 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 it covers a uh, uh, wide swath of um, different industries. Uh, just for instance, I believe it was in 2004, this is in Florida, because we're filming in Florida, so no, it's the reason I'm referencing that. Uh, in 2004, we had um, the Ramos brothers that were, uh, that were running uh, a slave ring for fruit pickers, and I, I believe it was in, um, it's just south of Orlando, and this was going on for years. And again, they were keeping people's uh, passports, not allowing them to leave. You know, bringing people from outside of the country, giving them temporary work visas, and when these people refused to work, I mean, they were they were threatened with death. They were coerced. Uh, Some were killed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and that is one of the things. Thank you for saying that because that is one of the things. There's this 
it seems like a, a grinding wheel, a system, and there's actually bullet points of things that they're looking for and ways yeah. that they deal with people. Because what I currently see from my from my um, from my investigation and from my studies and so forth, as I was looking, I was looking into everything. Is it always the same thing? Look for someone who probably is, you know, look a little bit dumb, doesn't have a lot, and there's this thing of separation from everybody else. Mm -hmm. And once they see that you're alone, you're you're a great target for them yeah. or once they see that you want to leave a situation you become a great target for them so let's just step, from, yeah to that point one of the stats I shared earlier on our page is that um, for runaway children mm -hmm. um, within four to eight hours of them running away one third of them are approached by a trafficker so, you know, these kids, teenagers, what do they do? They retaliate, they take off, they're gone. You, we were talking the other day and, and you said something profound. I didn't even think about this. You'd go to any train station and you just sit there and you, sit, you see these kids come off and they look bewildered. They don't know where they're going. And then they walk towards the wrong part of town and they get snapped. Or the right get, part of town. Because right. they're, they're, look, they're people at airports. Yeah. That target kids that come off the buses as well. They're there for that sole purpose. Oh, right. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? We're at the airport. We're at the bus stop at a um Broad at, 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 and at blind Home Depot mm -hmm. at the, the Greyhound bus stop. You just go there to casually pick up someone, pick them whatsoever it is, and that person, the predator, just blends in. Right there beside us. They don't have feathers and a big flag above them. I am a predator. Like the typical oh. pimp look. You know? But, but yeah, it, where, yeah. those, those recruit, they send kids to recruit other kids. Exactly. They, they, they send, do. yeah, and then they turn them over to a, a, a higher ranking, you know. And there's, a, there's something called the grooming. There's a grooming process and there's a gang something or other. And the, sto the stories are just... Sad. You know, it generally works where you, you, you have a pimp that he is a, or um, John that goes out and recruits, or he yeah, has really. some, he has some, um, some of the, um, the sex slaves, I want to call them, that are actually working for him, that go out and actually do the recruit, recruiting for him. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. But, they're um, slaves themselves. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about the children for a little bit. Like, I ran away from home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people may judge us and say, or why are these kids running away? It's part of the norm. You're unhappy for whatever reason. Um, your parent beats you, your parents, you feel like they don't love you, and you just run away because you can't take it anymore. Whatever the reason is, you're naive at that time that you're doing the act. Thankfully, when I ran away, I was running to my grandmother's house. How old were you? I was like young high school. I mean, my brother and I ran away a couple times because we were unhappy at home. Because the average age is 15. Right, 12, 15. To, 12 to 14 is one of, one of the studies shows that the average is for kids. Oh. So the kids have whatever reason, mindset, run away from home. Then you also have the online aspect of it now, which is show that the, the statistics are increasing because now people can do that from their home and then they, they go online and they have people that, you know, sweet talk them and they leave their home and they find themselves in vulnerable positions. Mm -hmm. Pictures are taken of these regular middle class students in high school and some rich families as well. Yeah. And then they have to go back to school the next day because now they've been shown pictures of themselves in these sexual positions. Mm -hmm and the predators have threatened to expose them to their parents. So now they're trapped. And these are kids still going to school. Yeah, they're of an impressionable age, so they believe these things and they think that there's no way out. Over 300,000 children under the age of 18, primarily girls, are lured into the sex trade every single year. And, 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 what and that's I, a, sorry, that's just in America. Yeah, yeah. What I, I found, um, I saw that, and um, I, I also saw that there is. Um, you, you you keep thinking that there's authorities out there, there's law enforcement, there, there are government officials, there are people, organizations, or NGOs, or things that are set up to actually combat this. But when you check it out, uh, incredibly, 
20 to 60 percent of, of I mean that's how, as a huge swap but it, it differs based on where you are in the globe but 20 to 60 percent of these sex workers are um, are abused by the authorities by law True. enforcement True. and that Where just yeah because they know that people that are in that industry people that are um, that have uh, been taken advantage of and are have no choice but to be in that in, in that position what recourse do they have so now you're a predator so now it's not just a regular person that's out there that is that's also that's um that's preying on them you have people who are supposed to be in uh, levels of authority that are taking advantage of it. So it's, it's, it's a stone. Yeah. So a good thing to think about, right, is um, once you find someone who is isolated or so forth and they are now drawn in. And, and just to give you a, a, a piece of fact here, when it comes to the industrial part of the human trafficking, to when they take you from another country, and they bring you here. You have kids as young as five, six, seven years old that's working in the field right alongside their parents and are not getting paid at all. Yeah. So, so speaking of that, I was in um, Key West a couple years ago and I noticed that the restaurants that would go in to like everybody, the servers and the, 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 um, the people who would greet you at the door, like they all had this particular look and then I realized that from restaurant to restaurant I would pick up like a similar accent. So I started to ask people where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? And I just thought it was strange. Now I know that Key West the cost of living is high. Not a lot of Amer Americans want to necessarily go down there and work or what they're gonna get paid for they can't afford to live there. So who are all these people? Right? So I came back and I did some research. And a lot of them were from Romania. Now, Romania is 25% below the poverty line. And when you dig into what was going on, and you, and you, and you read about these people's sleeping arrangements, but it's exactly what, what we're talking about today. Right. This is human. This is human trafficking. So, um, but what's interesting, if you talk to some of these people, they uh, prefer this type of life. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not a glorious life, it's a sad life they're being taken advantage of. Um, but some of them do it willfully because they're looking for a way out of their country. The sad thing is, most people don't do it willfully. Yeah. And it's, it's just deplorable. And, and it's funny, right? The, um, a lot of people are, are here and they get into the workforces and they are naturalized. There are some, you know, are still in the trade and being abused and they have a visa they yeah. have a citizenship but they are just kept in the dark so they don't know that yeah. there's another they're unaware. they're unaware of their situation and they're kept in these little communes and they're there for years and their kids grew up and they're there for years yeah and they don't know right and they so they the intervention every once in a while and you know what i think you touched on it earlier it's hard for us to really see someone coming in our area, down here in South Florida where we are, because it's so transient. <laughs> and we have people from all around the world coming here and moving in and so forth, you know, and, and living, buying a house next to us, renting the house next to us, and we don't see it as anything big. But the one thing that I can tell you is this, it, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting choked up now, I just can't even get into it any further. But there are people asking for help right next to you. But well, have the pimp of the person who is watching them right over them, them and yeah. controlling them with so that they don't even have no the, the energy to speak out. Mm -hmm. And they're right next to you. And all they would have to say is help me. Yeah. That's it. No, it's 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 right there. I'm glad you brought up that you're a key west because I mean that's just a couple hours of drive if that much um, away from where we are right now uh, but I, I touched on the fact that you have people that are preying on um, on on, uh, on these uh, on these people worldwide so you have uh, like in um in 2000 you, you brought up about these Romanian uh, restaurant workers you had the UN that was bringing in um, girls from uh, Romania Ukraine a lot of Eastern European countries and you having these girls servicing a lot of the UN workers. So you're supposed to have UN peacekeepers uh, that are preying on sex slaves. 
you know, they are using these um, these gangs, these criminals, and using their sex slaves to um, for their for their peacekeepers. And yet, the same thing that happened in um, in Haiti, and it was like, uh, with uh, a lot of the Sri Lankan um, yes, peacekeepers yeah. that were in Haiti. Mm -hmm. I think Catherine Balkovac, she did, she was the one who uncovered it, and um, she was subsequently. Um, fired from of the course. company that she was working for, you know, trying to, because she was she was putting it out there, and I guess she was speaking a little bit too loudly, but she did a good movie. You guys get a chance, if you should watch it. It's called um, The Whistleblower. Really good yeah. movie. It documents that, but not. It doesn't even go into in, into as deep as what it really took place in well, real life. You know, there's two instances that actually happened down here in Florida that. Um, that was the same incident, and um, I, I can't recall the name of the, the people in the incident, but one was Big Sugar, and yeah. that was quite prevalent down here. And when the whistleblower came out on that one, he was he was ridiculed at first, but stuck with it, and after a while, then it came out, and Big Tobacco mm -hmm. also. Yeah. So I wanted to share, Trisha Chung um, Foster, thanks for chiming in. She says that nurses are now being trained to look out for the signs. Mm -hmm. And thanks for saying that, Trisha. I did watch a documentary. Um, a doctor did a talk on how she actually had patients and treated patients and didn't realize at the time, like there were dollar sign tattoos in yeah. on, on her body, in her groin area. Um, you know, certain things that they didn't even realize at the time that this person was a human, uh, it was human trafficked. Yeah. Um, and so since we're on that, just some warning signs to look for. These aren't the be all end all, but you know, appearing malnourished is one of the signs, showing signs of physical injuries and um, abuse, avoiding eye contact in social interactions, um, afraid of authority figures and law enforcement, seeming to adhere to a scripted or rehearsed responses in social interaction settings, lacking official identification and documents, appearing destitute, lacking personal possessions like they don't own nothing um, because they're controlled, right? Um, as well as not allowing people to go into public um, places alone or speak for themselves. So again, there are lots of um, signs to look for. Those are just a few, but I'm relieved, Trisha, to hear that tr nurses and doctors and, and hopefully other people in other professions are being trained to look for the signs because it's prevalent in our society. There was also a story in the news about a uh, air stewardess that actually was able to help a young girl being trafficked for some of the signs that you just mentioned um, because she noticed the young girl was withdrawn. She tried to converse, converse with her. She wouldn't make eye contact. Um, every time she asked her a question, the man she was traveling with, who was well-dressed, she was poorly dressed, would answer for her. So she, you know, kept serving her drinks, so she would go to the bathroom, and she left a note in the bathroom and says, if you need help, let me know, right. write help on this. And she wrote help, and so by the time the plane landed, the police were waiting for them. So there are people that are out there doing a good job in, in identifying it, but for us to bring it to the forefront and have these conversations, it would make us all as a society more aware of our fellow um, yeah, people. Absolutely. Well, you know, it, it hit on one thing that we're advocating all the time here at the Caribbean Edge and that is we are trying to have conversation. Mm -hmm. You'll hear this recurrently, let's talk about this, let's talk about that. And every topic that we bring up, it, it, for some reason, it seems as if the topics, if we were conversing a little bit more, if we were saying hi to the neighbor a little bit more, and hi to someone as we pass them in, in businesses that we deal with, I think we'd be a little bit closer and the business people would be a little bit weary that oh, we got eyes on us and this thing would not be as prevalent because one of the first things that we went over that we saw is what? The isolation. Right. They try to, they, they look for the victim and isolate them first and then everything takes on, uh, rears its head after that. I think something you said is key, right? Because um, back to the sex part of it, um, you know, prostitution doesn't look like what it used to look like with the girls on the street anymore. You know, Backpage.com, they shut down Craigslist, but you can order a girl as quickly as you can order a pizza. The issue is they're coming into your home, they're going into hotel rooms, they're going into certain 
apartment so it's harder for the police to see it yeah. for people to see it to crack down on it um, and so um, and a big part of that is because of the internet right and and so and people are hiding behind them you know yeah. at least you're chiming in and she said we call human traffickers pimp and pimps in the USA and 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 that is true that's 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 one type of human, human trafficking. trafficking but the internet plays a big big part as to why they're able to get away with so much nowadays. So we have to educate our youth. What are the kids on? These devices. A lot of people, predators, lure kids in through through this. They target them, they go to the park, they go to the school, they, they target them, they watch them. Right. Yeah, so the, it, you, um, you speak about the, the sex side of it, all right? So uh, I'm gonna attempt to uh, shift gears up in here, because, you know, Again, when you think human trafficking, sex, and the old adage goes, sex sells. So that's what sensationalized on, on, um, on TV and on the news. And as it should be, right? Because that's a huge part of human trafficking. But there's another part of it as well. There's so, because human trafficking is, uh, if we're to split it up into percentages, right? 60, uh, it's like 65, 70% is, yeah, 65, 70% is forced labor. Right? And just over 20% is prostitution. Yeah. And then another 10% is state imposed labor. Right. So when I say that and, that and translate that, that means slavery, right? So what I mean when I say state imposed slavery, I mean incarcerated people mm -hmm. who are being taken advantage of by, by them being incarcerated and using them for labor yeah. by the same people that, uh, that many of us are going to go to these stores before the end of the night, oh, where that yeah. some of these products are sold by Target, some of these products are sold by Walmart, Carrefour, different if, different um, different stores, and this is part of the problem that we don't realize, we don't address, or we don't recognize because we hear prison, we think, yeah, of course there's a prison. That is right. But you know, right. We have no, we have right. no, we have right. no, no right. idea that this is an abnormal situation in this country, mm -hmm. the size of our prison population. Because a lot of people don't understand there are tons of prisons out there that are for profit. That's all it is. They have it's to make business. money. It's a, a business. business. And that's trafficking. Yeah. That's that trafficking. Business. In California, in California, they were, um, they're trying to, there was a bill that was passing because they were going to release, uh, 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 I don't remember the figure, but they're going to release a good amount of prisoners to make space in their penal system because they're running out of space to house the people that were coming in, right? And do you know what the state, what, 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 what the state um, use as their argument against this? Their argument was, no, we're losing a labor force. That was the argument. That's they are losing a good portion of the labor force. So somebody makes sense of that for me, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So while while you know it, it, there's a lot of things that we see it's human trafficking, you know, it's it's a sex, it's people working in the fields, but there are also people that are in jail, and it's it, it's really easy to sweep that under the rug because they did something bad and they should pay a price. No, yeah. no other country in the world is as abusive and as predatory as we are on our prisoners. Yeah. Human trafficking is thought to be one of the fastest growing activities of transnational criminal organization. It's organized crime. Yeah. Organized on a very high level. Plus a lot of the kids <laughs> that have been abused in the foster care system end up in prison as well. Mm -hmm. That's so it, you know, a lot of it is repeating the cycle. A lot of people that have been abused are also abusers themselves. And so it's that point of where do you stop the cycle? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's one celebrity that I think has done an amazing job of bringing attention to it, and that's Ashton Kutcher. He and his wife, Demi Moore, at the time started their own foundation against yeah. it. Yes, they actually built software that's reduced the time from finding kids from three weeks to three days. Really? Yeah, so yes, yeah, it's, it, it's really an amazing job. He's gone on FBI raids where he says he can't see the things that he has seen no one should be exposed to, where he saw such young kids being victims of, of, of American men um, sleeping with them. To one point, the little girl thought she was engaged in, in playing. Right. So it's that mindset that mm -hmm. Shauna um, 
spoke about earlier is what mindset are these kids in when they're looking at this. In 2016, just to add, carry on to that because you're speaking again. And I, I, I know I keep popping on this, but I like to bring up situations in first world countries because we don't like to think that this happens in our backyard. We're, like, right we're more civilized than that, right? Mm -hmm. So in 2016, you had just over 11,000 Nigerians. Uh, Nigerian women that were brought, um, boys and girls that were that were brought into Italy, into Sicily to be to be specific, the southern Italy, and 80% of those people that were brought in were being used in prostitution. 80% of them, and that was uncovered. That's not hearsay. That's not oh you're blowing things out of proportion. This is factual. Mm -hmm. These are things that are happening. Just in Utah in 2015, they uncovered a sex ring. Of um that, that was disguised as massage parlors. Oh, yeah. That was oh, in Utah. That is oh, big. Yeah. 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 They're right here. You pass them and you're like, how is that a massage parlor? You go down to the beach. Uh, we're close to Soul Beach. You go down to the beach. Do you have any idea how many girls are down there that are working? They are not down there chilling and are tourists. They are working. So let's take it to the next phase, right? Because a lot of people will be like, oh, they want to be there. Or why don't they just leave? It's not that simple because let me just make create a scenario for you. So you picture you send your little girl to school. She's 12 years old, right? That is what elementary school. Uh, what's next after elementary? Um, uh, middle, middle school, school, right? Middle school age, not even high school, and she is walking home from the bus station. What happens is they oh, say, boy. right, to give her some attention. So if this little girl is lacking any <coughs> type of self-esteem, not necessarily feeling love at home, fighting with her siblings, fighting with her parents, her mother, and now here's somebody doting on her, paying her attention, giving her attention. And then fast forward, she thinks this is her boyfriend, right? She is in love or she's attracted to this person. She's going to home, right? Every day she's going to school, she's going home. But what parents who are not in touch don't realize is now he, he convinces her that he cares about her, right? And then they start getting involved sexually. And then now when he has her trapped mentally, then now he starts to sell her for sex, whether him or whoever is in this room. It's a mental game. It's a, it's, it's a mental game and it's, and it's very real. It happens in... In impoverished areas, it happens in middle class areas, it happens in every yeah. single area that you could possibly imagine. That's just one scenario, but I want you to think about it because people think, oh, it can't reach me. It can reach you. <laughs> Even from this research, I mean, my kids are older now. I mean, my daughter is 18 and my son 24. And I'm still, after all this research, I will still educate them because I still think they're vulnerable. And it was so, made me so aware of what's happening that I want them to be aware as well because they may have friends that are going through it or siblings and I want them to be prepared for their own kids as well as we change as a society. So we encourage everyone to research um, the t some of these topics that we're covering and make yourself aware. You have to do it. You really do have to do your own due diligence. And I promise you, it will be surprising and it will be, um, I don't want to use enlightening, that almost sounds like you're going to be a better person, but it it's, it's going to be heart wrenching when yeah, you see yeah. what, what's actually taking place. Just, in, in, uh, you remember Hurricane Katrina? Mm -hmm. Hurricane Katrina, that was what, 2005. Because um, I, I, I think I misspoke earlier. I spoke about gangsters and criminals and you know, these people that are putting, you know, people to work, you know, with human trafficking. But I, I, the reason I say I misspoke is because there are organizations, there are companies that are being traded, blue chip companies, these are companies that are being traded on the stock market, established entities that are engaging in this, right? Mm -hmm. And this is in 2005 around Hurricane Katrina, Signal International was fine. They were prosecuted and fined because they were bringing Indian workers to work as pipe fitters, to work on the oil rigs um, to clean up after Hurricane Katrina. All right, this is a company that was taking advantage of people who, and then and also taking advantage of us here who had to bear the brunt of a natural disaster. 
You know what? I, I, I seem, because of that country being impoverished, I noticed that um, in Qatar, they're also brought to Qatar to do the construction and they're yeah. dying left and right mm -hmm. and they're just, the bodies are dumb. Mm -hmm. What is also happening is that um, we, they're, they're getting all the people from Pakistan, from Philippines, from India, and so and they would look for these people. It's the same, and you know, it's always the same thing, right? Just yeah. what we're saying. They try to figure out which country has these people, want to draw them out, separate them from the family, take them to our fireplace, and then house them in somewhere that's that's inhumane, and tell them that, oh, you know, we can pay you next week. No, we'll pay you, no, sorry, you know, you owe us this for shipping you over. So they end up in debt, and they actually owe the construction. Back, yeah. So yeah. they now are working as slaves. Mm -hmm. They were actually working for free. Um, and I want to touch on something also that you brought up because I had, um, hey Maurice, how you doing Bridget? Mr. Crooksy, good to have you here. But uh, you have something that I'm going to read for everyone. It says, good afternoon, I beg to interject. I actually support the idea of placing prisoners on work sites such as government farms. Really? But thank thank, thank you for, for making that point. Um, but we're going to just put it out in a panel for us to... I think we need to address that. Of course we need to address it. I mean, Crooksy, you, you heard what was said about um, the for-profit prisoners, uh, prison system that we have here. And the system is, is not self. We're not saying everybody is going to do wrong. We're not saying that at all. We're not lumping up, lumping everybody and putting them in the same basket. What we're saying is it is out there and there are people who are abusing the prisoners. And... Um, my personal opinion is there's a system for incarceration which has to do with the black people, the black men of this of this of the United States. And there's a there's a nice trail for them to go straight into prison. And then the way out is extremely high. Let me address, let me address that really quick. So you, see, you have a, a problem with or not a terror problem, you support the use of that kind of labor. Um, to, to, to whether it's building um, building projects or putting goods together or working in the fields. Okay, so that seems like, oh, well, that's punitive. So they did something wrong, give them something to do instead of living off the taxpayers' money, which is, which is the common adage, right? But understand something that as a corporation, as an entity, as a for-profit business, what your main goal, your main incentive is, is margin. What you want to do is increase your profit. What you want to do is increase what's in the black. And if that is your motive, you, if you have a profit motive and you're using this kind of labor, whether it's free or whether it's pennies on a dollar, then what is to stop you from making sure that that labor force is always available? And that is where the problem becomes. They're going to funnel constantly. people into the prison. Exactly, because it's not the first time it's happened before. Mm -hmm. After slavery, what happened? You had different um different laws that came in vagrancy laws in the south. Different um they, they, it went when the north when the north northern troops left, then it was a free for all. What happened is they started going around. They had, they had sheriffs, not like now where they get paid by the state, but they were getting a lot of their money was getting paid by plantation owners that were paying law enforcement to take prisoners to use on their plantations, and they were used as slave labor. So now slavery. Didn't in all in all, in all it actuality shifted. it never yeah. ended. No, it just shifted the, exactly. the way slavery is handled. Exactly. Yeah, with labor labor. Um, so this is not new. No, no, no. Um, and to, just to share some numbers with you in terms of human trafficking in the labor um, arena, sixty percent of men who are uh, are trafficked and forty percent women, and then in the sex arena, it's ninety eight percent women and two percent men. Um, very real, just astonishing, astonishing numbers. But, you know, do we want to address some ways that you, our audience, and well as, uh, uh, as well as us, the panel, ways that we can um, help to make a difference, to try to slow this process and hopefully eventually stop it? It's not something that's going to go away anytime soon because it's a hundred and fifty billion yeah, yeah, dollar yeah. industry uh, yeah. um, you know and which is why it's happening because if there's a if there's vulnerability and a way for people to make money they're going to find a way to yeah yes and one of the things that we want you to do because we're we're running on time now and we're going to we're going to close um, soon what we want you to do is if there's things that you can come up with that you think 
might be a way of noticing this. Just chime in right now as we um, as we start to close. Um, I, I wanted to touch on something that's um, yeah. there was Antonio um, Antonio Costa. He was working for the for the UN, um, the I think Institute of Drugs and Crime in 2009, and he made um, he made a statement. And if I remember, if I understand correctly, he spoke about the supply chain issue, which is what he was saying is that's the main problem with combating this because every region of the world has different circumstances as to um, how human trafficking comes into play. So whether you have um, a Nigerian uh, family that either sells their daughter in, or whether you have an Indian um, uh, family that uh, is, 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 is wants to go to another country, so they put themselves up to be able to go into forced labor or you have gangs coming into, into Romania or where the Avenue is working in Ireland or whatnot, right? You have different circumstances. Uh, he, he was alluding to the way to combat that, the way to combat human trafficking is to understand the supply chain. Right. So you may not have uh, somebody who is uh, a victim of human trafficking, of, um, of slavery, of forced labor, that is working behind the counter selling you something, but you may have somebody who was instrumental in making it, in manufacturing that product that you're buying. So it's understanding and adjusting the laws worldwide because I have faith in people's um, morals and their ethics and I don't pe think people will, they will stand for it if it's in their face and if they understand how deep it goes. Mm -hmm. right. All right, so I watched, I watched a, a brief video about a man in my own country um, where the uncle was actually pimping out his niece. Sometimes it's and thing. his feedback was, hey, your mom trust her with me. It should be shut. And it was a sting operation, but they traded money, like $300 from one of them, 200 for the next one. And the poor little girl was sent off to the room to have sex with the tourist. So of course the police came in and arrested him, and that was his comment. Her mom trusted me. So for me, the awareness as parents is key as to how involved you are with your children and the education. I know Shauna mentioned something earlier to, her, to me um, when we were setting up, which is she wants to have that conversation with her daughter. She just has to find the right way to say to I don't her want to traumatize her, traumatized. but I need to make her yeah. aware. You know, if you guys haven't seen the movie Taken, Oh, um, yeah. You know, I mean, that's real life. It does happen. But Don, you know, the sad part about that, I know that particular incident was in the Caribbean and they arrested the uncle. I remember watching mm -hmm. that um, a, a year or so ago. However, what happens a lot in the States too is these victims are actually treated as criminals. And then the cycle, where do they go? To prison. Yeah, yeah. Where, do exactly. they, where, they, where the slavery continues. Yeah. So I implore you guys, I ask you to let's start at home. We went over some of the signs to, to look for, but we can start with our individual families. We all have a son, a daughter, a niece, a nephew, a brother, an uncle, you name it. They have, they have people that they're pimping at 64 years old for crying out loud. Right. So what we can do, it actually starts with love, believe it or not. We have to pay attention to our children. We have to give them attention. We have to let them know we're proud of them. We have to know what they're doing, what they're involved in, who they're talking to, who their friends are, where they are. And especially in America where the cycle is just so you literally feel like a ferret on a wheel. No, if you made the decision to bring a child into this world, we have a responsibility to protect them. Okay, and know what is going on. But I do want to share seven ways which you can help fight against human trafficking um, outside of your or home and talking to our children and our loved ones. Uh, you start a club or a community group. Lobby local policymakers. Hold an event to raise awareness. Um, launch a research project. Um, snag a job at one of these anti-trafficking organizations. Um, pursue a fellowship. There are lots of groups out there like not for, a not for sale campaign that you can become a part of. Avoid product and companies that facilitate human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And Sean, that is what you've been trying to, you've articulated so yeah. well, is that a lot of the big box companies are involved. It's just not in your face. So and some of them knowingly, some yeah. of them unknowingly. So I'm yeah. not trying to demonize them. Some of them is unknowingly. They have no idea in their supply chain. So.
Right. I want to add three to that. Yes. Share this video. Yes. Share the Caribbean Edge as a community and as a support system for Awareness. people and make others aware. Get involved. There's so many different ways to be involved. There are charities that are coming up. Get involved. Be aware of that. And for the people that are out there doing it, you know, Ashton Kusher mentioned, real men don't. Don't buy young children. Yeah. Stop, you know, stop sleeping yeah. with young children. Yeah. Give them a life. Give them an opportunity to become someone. And don't devastate them at an early age in life. I think that's key. If you're a predator, just stop. Mm -hmm. It's not right to sleep with 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 3-year-olds. And stop playing games because, you know, these men go into their, these rooms or even, even pornography. They'll say, oh, they're 18 or they're 19 and they're of age. No, they're not. not. No, they are not. And if they don't smile and wave, they pump them up with drugs and with alcohol and they threaten to beat them within an inch of their life if they don't pretend like they like it. So do not be fooled. These, yeah. these people do not want to be a part of this. Help them to get out. And wives and girlfriends, stop your husbands and your boyfriends from doing it. Don't turn a blind eye because some of you do. Um, I'm, I'm really um, big on uh, providing direction and understanding the kind of imbalances we have. You, you spoke about the, the, the funnel from it doing the um, selling or purchasing and then going to jail or being prosecuted. But there's a huge difference between those that are buying the junk, um, speaking specifically on sex trafficking, those that are buying versus those that are selling. Invariably, those that are buying are not um, are, are not being subject to the same punitive measures as those uh, are those that are selling. So we didn't even get to touch on that, but that's a huge part of the problem. Huge part of the problem. I don't see how the one who is selling is any more guilty than the one who is purchasing. But that, that's another level. But right. I also wanted to to I think it, it warrants giving a shout out to the government of Jamaica because just in April of this year. We joined with um, United Nations, the Office right. of Domestic yes. and Crime, nice. to um, to uh, join the Blue Heart campaign, which fights against uh, human trafficking. Excellent. And this is the first English-speaking country um, to do so. So they joined Brazil, uh, I believe it's um, Lebanon. I'm, I'm not sure. There are a couple other countries, but uh, first English-speaking country. So you know. Yeah, yeah, um, probably on yeah. Um, is there anything anybody else would like to add as before we Yeah, just Maurice had chimed back in after you had commented Sean right. that he he's saying that uh, or, or Crooksy is what you call it. Yeah, okay. Crooksy. Um yeah. they <laughs> earn money for their upkeep and then Gail Foster, thank money? you for chiming in. That, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Gail know, Gail says unfortunately poverty let some parents turn a blind eye and then Melissa Hibbert, yes Gail, absolutely true. And Melissa asked us to share the seven ways to get involved in Information in the comments later so we will. we will definitely post that in there so thank you for being interested yeah. um, and, 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 and our hotline and, as well oh yes yeah, 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 uh, yeah but, so but tell them what it is, with, what it yeah, is. so uh, there's a hotline that you can call if any of the signs that you heard today are prevalent or you, you just think it's there there's nothing wrong with calling I get um, get it Taking it, you know, even if it's um, even if, even if it's nothing, it's better you call than not call. And the hotline is 888 373 7888. And we will post it again after that. Once again, the hotline is 888 373 7888. And to just uh, another, another um, resource for you to use. You can go to slaveryfootprint.org. You can find out, we said it in the beginning of the show about finding out how many slaves are working for you right now. Go there, slaveryfootprint.org. You can punch in, it'll ask you certain questions. You can actually find out how many, on average, how many um, slaves are working in your, in, uh, for the your sustainability, for the things that you eat, think, everything. Check it out. And guys, I want to thank everybody for chiming in today. Every single person had something with a quality to add to this, and I really appreciate it. And that's just our first step, uh, our first step here of talking about it and getting engaged. Um, yeah, we, you know, that in this forum again, we always try to bring awareness. We want to um, make people aware. This is a very heavy topic, um, but please don't think that you're 
removed from it. It's happening in our backyard. backyard. That's correct. So, so yeah. definitely, please, if you have a heart, just get involved and um, pay attention right. to the kids. And please. remember, the human body is not a commodity to be traded. Mm -hmm. Not a commodity, yeah. and they use it for just about everything as we've discussed earlier. And I'd like to thank you once again for, for joining, watching. for watching us here on, on the, the Caribbean, Caribbean Edge. Edge. Yeah. Remember to like, share, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Yeah, thumbs up, all of that. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Have a great evening. See you next week. <laughs>